So how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Good. You know, just a busy morning. Got my kid off to school. So <laughs> rush back here. Well, it's uh, still, <laughs> still the, uh, it's was the evening here in, in, in London. Yeah. Still sunny, which is handy, but I'm going to uh, get started. Um, Spears, okay. is, Spears is a great character. You must have been so thrilled to, to get the chance to do it all over again and kind of and expand on, on his further, on his story further. Yeah, no, you know, I mean, um, after the first season, you know, Netflix kind of waits to tell you if you're going to get a second season or not. And I had such a blast playing him the first season. And, uh, you know, we were all kind of on pins and needles if we were going to get renewed. And then when we did, it was it was uh, we were over the moon, <laughs> to say the least. And yeah, in this season, they really um, gave Spears a, a, such an amazing arc for me to play and uh, and really kind of went further and, and a little bit more in depth with the character. So it was, it was a great time. Yeah. I mean, audiences, we're like, we're so excited to see where characters and stories are going to go. Is that the same for you? Yeah. Then I guess you must get those first scripts and just go, I have no idea where they're going to take my character. That must be such a great little moment of kind of expectation. Yeah, no, I totally, I mean, I had no idea where they were going to go with the second season. You know, they, they could have either just picked up, you know, right from where we left off, you know, or were they going to fast forward a few months or even years, you know, so it was definitely exciting to to get the scripts and see where, where they were taking it. Yeah. And I mean, the first season did so well. I mean, particularly over here in the UK, it was a huge hit. Uh, yeah. when Netflix. Well, is there a kind of second season swagger? Because I guess in that first season, there's always a sense of our, our audience is going to receive this well. They're going to like certain aspects of this. But when you know it's been well received and you know there's a, a fan base now kind of there and sort of waiting to see what's going to happen. Does that, I don't know, is, is there a more, is there a kind of confidence that comes of that when you, all of you guys return to set for season two? Uh I, it did for me. <laughs> I can't speak for everybody, but I think so. And, you know, and the fact that uh, you know, Netflix gave us uh, a much larger budget this season, I think that instilled some confidence, like, oh, they want to see, you know, uh, what we can do with the, a little bit more. And um, yeah, I, you know, and, and also the first season, I, you know, I, I booked the job and I was on set within two weeks, <laughs> you know, so, uh, and not, and I didn't have all the scripts. So I was kind of finding spears as I, as I went along. Um, and, you know, as I think most actors, you're, you're not sure how it's going to be received. And, you know, I got, uh, we got a great reception and I think people really like spears. And so definitely the second season I came back like, okay, I know what I'm doing. And I had much more time with the scripts. Um, so there was definitely a little, a little more confidence, a little more puffing your chest out <laughs> it has got a very dedicated fan base have you enjoyed dialogue with fans across the time where you want those actors that likes to kind of stay clear of that because i know obviously you know i've been to those kind of comic con stuff and anyone who's in a marvel movie and stuff like that there's kind of yeah it's sort of but but that that comes doesn't it with kind of fan culture I just wondered if yeah if, if you're one of those people that quite likes speaking about the show of fans or, or you like to to keep a little bit of a disconnect in that regard um you know i i think i tend to take a bit more of a disconnect approach uh I'm a pretty private person so um but you know I I I enjoy doing interviews I enjoy you know um talking to like I, I've had people come up to me and talk to me about the show and I'm uh you know I love doing that um but I'm not somebody who's kind of on social media just kind of always responding to every you know every tweet or <laughs> whatever every post yeah, I think that's pretty wise. You're saving a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm a dad. I, I don't have that kind of time to just be sitting on my phone. <laughs> you know, my wife was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Talking." <laughs> it's funny because I mean, did you guys shoot this um, since like COVID, the second season? I mean, has that been shot with the kind of new regulations and stuff? Yeah, um, actually, interestingly enough, we started um, and then about three weeks or so into production, we got shut down. Um, and, you know, actually, I left my stuff there because they were like, oh, yeah, we're just shutting it down for two weeks. And so I left my stuff in Canada, I came back to the U.S. And, you know, and then we were we ended up being shut down for six months or so. Um, got some of my stuff back. Some of it got lost. <laughs> um, I hope you didn't leave anything too important. <laughs> no, nothing too important. Just lost socks and shirts. But uh, <laughs> but uh, so then we got brought back and I believe we were one of the first um episodes or first series films to get back into production uh, I know they were really anxious to finish it up um, especially since we had already started so yeah we were one of the first productions I believe to start and finish in, in COVID 
Um, and yeah, and it was it definitely changed the dynamic of the set, you know, shooting with everyone in their PPEs and um, just, you know, there's different zones that people could be in to try to keep, you know, some social distancing, uh, and, you know, and, and usually there's like a sense of fun on set. This was like business like, <laughs> you know, let's get this done. We got to get out of here. No messing around. Yeah, because I was going to say, not only I'm sure it obviously changed the dynamic of the set, but did it change the kind of perspective? Because I guess we've just experienced it's one of the closest things we can kind of get to a zombie apocalypse <laughs> in the yeah. pandemic, of it, just in how life has changed, you know, how we've all been locked down and all of the things we kind of took for granted. We no longer, there are lots of things we didn't have sure. access to. So when you filmed that kind of second series after the, the break, did you have a bit of a different perspective to, to, to how you did before before the, the, the pandemic kicked in? Yeah, I think so. I, I think. Um... You know, the season felt real, <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, it, I think because we were living in an actual pandemic and scared of this virus that was infecting, you know, millions of people. Um, and I mean, that's essentially the premise of Black Summer, except, you know, it just <laughs> the virus turns people into zombies. Um, but there's that fear that kind of lives there. And so between that and just you, this season is as much about um, fighting the great outdoors as it is zombies. So actually being in the Calgary mountains in 10 degrees, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of acting needed. It was just like, well, I'm cold, so I'll just use that, <laughs> you know. That's probably because you didn't have those socks and that T-shirt that you left a few weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but why can't we get enough of zombies? Well, because it is it's one of those cinematic or TV tropes that every three or four years there'll be another movie or a TV season. That's not a criticism, by the way, because I'm one of those people where when I see there's going to be a film about zombies, I'm just like, yeah, that, that sounds cool. And there, it's just something about that stomping ground, isn't it? That just breeds such brilliant kind of content. And I, just, well, why, why are we? Why do we all love zombies, Justin? <laughs> you know that is. Is a great question and uh, I'm not entirely sure because I wasn't a big zombie fan before I, I came into this you know um, I, I've definitely grown to appreciate the genre um, I, I don't know I, I think there's some obsession with uh, you know because usually zombies it's like there's like some infection that's happening and and I think it's like of the horror genre and of the monster genre I think it's the closest to reality you know it's almost like you can actually see that happen as opposed to like werewolves or vampires or something but like zombies it's like no oh, that's that's close <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've walked around London when, uh, in the middle, in early morning when people are on their way to work and you see a few zombies then, I think, as well. So do you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how, how, how do you reckon you cope in circumstances like that? Because I'm definitely one of those people who would die first. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm 100 percent one of those people that would just see a zombie freeze and I'd, I'd be as gone with the minutes. How, how, are you, do you think if you've got quite good like survival instincts, you know, you someone that's like likes climbing and stuff like that and sort of like outdoor activity that would set you in good stead? Uh, you know, I mean, I ran track in college, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I could, I could probably run away pretty quickly. Um, but you know, and funnily enough, my, my kind of like little crew of, of people that I hang with are all real serious, like survivalist mountain camping people. So I'd probably like hitch, hitch with them and be like, all right, what are we doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was always I always think whenever I see things like this because I'm always whenever you see characters kind of having to leave their home and they're out there kind of on the on the run or whatever trying to survive out in the great wilderness in the in the face of an apocalypse and I always wonder what I'd like keep with me you know if there's only one item I'd always make sure it was on me of great sentimental value I just wondered what yours might be is there anything that comes to mind when you think about something that would always be in your pocket or around your neck at all times sentimental or survival wise uh well but so sentimental i think yeah sentimental um yeah. i mean i i would probably probably my wedding ring <laughs> and probably uh this necklace that my that my mom gave me so yeah. and uh, what, yeah. i was gonna say yeah what, what do you reckon you'd miss most about normal life i think music is always the thing that i always I always think of um you know i i, I would have to say from this experience of the actual pandemic, uh, social interaction, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a people person and, uh, you know, I love hanging with my friends and family and, uh, you know, not being able to see them as much one-on-one -on -one or, or in a group setting, um, especially a group setting, 
is and just even be able to go out to bars and and restaurants and hang you know it's it it's been it's been difficult so um off the top of my head I think that's be one of the, the things I'd miss most yeah but getting back to normal though very slowly but we're getting there um slowly, slowly yeah. we're getting there, we're getting there slowly. <laughs> uh, and how do you reckon there could be more black summer is, is it something that you because could you see there being further series down the line or because I, I get I know obviously it's sort of working as a kind of prequel thing but it, it feels like for me that there, there's still so much more development these characters could there could be for these characters yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. Um, you know, again, we, we have to wait for, for the almighty Netflix to <laughs> approve us again. But uh, I, I mean, I think there's definitely room. I've talked to the showrunner and and in his mind, he has a, at least three seasons worth of storytelling um, and he sees a full arc. Um, and, or as he calls it chapters, he sees three chapters in this in this series. And, uh, and really he, he sees it as like a long movie you know so really it's kind of like a trilogy in his in his mind so I think there's definitely some room to grow yeah and talking to movies because obviously we saw you in blind spotting but is that is that is it is there an inclination to sort of do more do more film in in the future I know these days it doesn't really matter when I was a kid it felt like you had tv actors and you had film yeah. actors. And now there's no such thing anyone does anything and the, the production quality of tv is so good and there's such great tv um but I just wondered yeah if you've just just as just as a, from a personal point of view are you hoping to to try your hand at maybe a few movies going forward yeah I would love to uh get into film, you know, and I mean, like you said, there's television, I mean, a lot of television, I, I, I look at Black Summer as almost just a long film, you know, um, and and I think they shot it that way. Uh, and I think a lot of television is that. So, you know, but but actual films, I would love to get it. I mean, that's what I fell in love with. That's why I started acting. I, I love, you know, old films. Um, and yeah, I'd love to try my hand at that. And, and, and not to mention, I'd love to eventually do some directing of films as well it's, it's you know it's uh it's kind of why i started so oh, oh so that's what yeah. that's been a long-term goal right from from the offset to, to maybe direct one day um it's certainly it's developed into a long-term goal you know i mean I, I mean i started because i i love film um but it's definitely developed into wanting to write and direct my own stuff as well yeah, because obviously I, mean, I was reading you're sort of born and raised in California, but that's kind of feels like the world's stage is on your doorstep in many ways. Did it always feel like this was a, a profession for you? Have you been kind of creatively inclined ever since you were a kid? Uh, yeah, I mean, my my mom was an art teacher. Um, so that, that kind of helped. I mean, she she started her career as an art teacher, but, um, you know, she would always do art projects with me and my brother and taught us calligraphy and we would collage and, you know, um, so I, I think I, you know, and when I was in middle school, high school, I got into graffiti and, and that kind of thing. So I've always been into comic books. Uh, so, yeah, I think creativity was always part of my part of my DNA. So my, my final question before I do go is I was just wondering because I well, I just mentioned blind spotting before. I literally just got off a Zoom with Raphael Casal, who I just interviewed for the blind oh, spotting, yeah. uh, just literally about half an hour before speaking to you. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah, because and, and, obviously he's for the promoting the new blind spotting TV series. Are you looking forward to to watching that? Because it must be quite interesting to see a world that you knew now kind of being sort of expanded upon on, on the smaller screen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm also in Blind Spotting as well. The series. Oh, are you in the TV? I've, oh, really? I didn't say. Oh, nice. Well, there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just have I have a couple my, a pop up here and there. Oh, cool. cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Rafael Casal and David Diggs are are some of my. We, we grew up together. We we're childhood friends. Uh, we went to high school together. Um, so I'm incredibly excited um, for you know for as as a friend as close friends for them to have this opportunity to you know, to create something I think television hasn't seen before. Uh, I mean, they've always done spoken word and hip hop and rap and, and they've always done plays that incorporate uh, spoken word, which is a little bit more common, but I think it's never, certainly not successfully been kind of incorporated into film and television. And uh, from the little I've seen, they've done a phenomenal job uh, making this kind of spoken word television series. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for that to come out. Yeah, it's definitely, it's one of those things that could so easily not work. <laughs> yeah. Like, so easy, but it just does, doesn't it? It's such brilliant. I didn't know you guys went, went back so far. That's really cool. I mean, they're, they're, they're yeah, they're a couple of talented dudes, man. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we all came to LA together and, uh, you know, we started doing the, 
the, the grind together. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to finish, but because I, I, I told Raphael as well, I wasn't lying to him. I've not uh, finished it yet, so I'm gonna, I'll keep an eye out and try and, <laughs> and spot you in a yeah. uh, later because I'm, I'm, I think it's just brilliant telly. So, um, so yeah, but yeah, it's like, yeah, no. so's black, so is black summer. So you're doing well. I, me and my friends haven't got anywhere near as well. <laughs> 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 anywhere near that. But anyway, um, thank you so much for talking to me today, Justin. It's been a real thank pleasure. You. Um, and yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, best of luck with the release of, of season two. And maybe, you know, there's a season three down the line. They might do a press junket in London. Or maybe I can come. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nice to meet All right, you. man. Thank you, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.